Hello friends, today we want to speak on qualities of those who rank highest in the kingdom of heaven. It would be good to write down Revelation 14 verse 1 to 5. Here is a very special group right around the throne, right beside the Lamb on Mount Zion. And these are among those who rank highest in the kingdom of heaven. When you compare this with Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 and 10, we see a multitude that no man could number, millions and millions, but here is a very special numbered group, 144,000, who are among all the nations of the world, a very choice group, right beside the Lamb on Mount Zion, <clears throat> having the same qualities well, <clears throat> they are without spot before the throne. There is no deceit in their mouth or without fault. A very, very, very special group. We want to strive for the qualities we're going to look at in these particular people. Now, we're not talking about competition and <clears throat> trying to be better than each other. Not at all. We're simply looking at qualities that cause people to rank high in eternity and to be very close to God. There are different proximities to God in heaven. Some are very near and some are not as near. But Jesus taught us this, that if you want to be great in God's kingdom, we need to learn to be the servant of all and that those who exalt themselves are made low. So just from that one sentence alone, we see that some are greater in the kingdom of heaven and some are the least. So <clears throat> we want to study these characteristics uh, and have the same virtues worked out in our lives in order to win Christ, to be very close to him, to have a better resurrection, and Jesus told us to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. We are to invest in things that last for eternity. We want to invest, first of all, in our own character. In Matthew 5, 19, Jesus makes it very clear that some are great in the kingdom of heaven and some are the least in the kingdom of heaven. And this is what he says here in Matthew 5, 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, not a major one, and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So just from that verse, we see that there are differing degrees of reward in eternity. In that particular verse in Matthew 5.19, he is especially directing this toward leaders, teachers, uh, when you let down God's standards and you teach others, you cause people to come short of God's highest, of Christian maturity and being totally conformed to the image of Christ. We're talking about least commandments, not major ones. Major ones, you could lose your soul. Well, for, for a moment, I want to read Revelation 14, verse 1 to 5. And it would be good in the future to meditate on these verses because these are qualities of those who rank closest to the Lord. John writes, <clears throat> And I looked, and behold, the Lamb, Christ, stood on Mount Zion. This is Mount Zion in heaven. And with him, right beside him, there were 144,000 having a special name having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, 
as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. So this is not only a song, but it's a message that's been wrought in their hearts that no one else could learn. There are things, <clears throat> if we don't learn certain things on earth, there are certain things we can't learn in heaven. So here it is. <clears throat> These are they who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are morally pure people. It doesn't mean they weren't married, but virgin is the thought of being morally pure. These are they who have followed the Lamb wherever he goes, so they were totally faithful in their life's work. They were redeemed among men, being first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Very choice. In their mouth was found no deceit. And they are without fault before the throne of God. So these are issues that we want to pursue in life. Those in this group on Zion's Hill excel in the following things, and we're going to go through them and reiterate them. But they are totally conformed to the image of Christ. They're just like him. If Christ is a lamb and meek, so are they. And the meek inherit the earth. But Christ is closest to those who are like him, those who are compatible with him, conform to his image. They're very close to him uh, in intimacy of relationship. So, in fact, this is what Paul terms the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's to have a better resurrection. It's to win Christ, to be just like him. And so, they are made perfect, they're without fault. They've been perfected in their faith and in love and in character. Very, very wonderful people. But God wants to develop these qualities in us. They are very pure in heart. What does Matthew 5, 8 say? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And here is a group of people right around the Lamb, right beside him, seeing his beautiful face. Another translation, <clears throat> blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see as God sees. So they have his thinking, his perspective. They see his lovely face forever gazing upon him and <clears throat> forever being transformed more and more into his beautiful image and hearing his words right beside him. Another aspect of these who are right beside him is deep humility. Therefore God hath highly exalted them. Remember what Jesus taught. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. And Paul talks about this in Philippians 2, verse 5 to 9, that Jesus went lower than anyone. Therefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name above all other names. These around the throne have a special name in their foreheads. Deeply, humil uh, deeply humble. They're also a people who were deeply dependent on God. Who is God nigh unto? He is nigh unto those who are of a broken and contrite spirit. We are told in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. So he is nigh, very close to those who are of a broken spirit, those who are dependent upon him. And they also have the Lamb's nature the very essence of meekness, just like the lamb. 
no retaliation, no bitterness, no vengeance. Morally pure. Revelation 14, verse 4. They're undefiled. Now, people who've had mistakes in their past, they can be thoroughly cleansed and be, still be very close to the Lord. But this is a very, very special relationship right beside the Lamb. They're undefiled morally. So we want to teach our children and to keep ourselves morally pure. They have a clean tongue. James 3 verse 2 tells us that. And the tongue reveals the heart. And these, these who are right around the Lamb have a very pure heart. In their mouth is found no deceit. There's nothing distorted. And they have the greatest fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. So they're very wise. We're told in Psalm 19 that wisdom is uh, related to purity. And uh, so, but I want you to, to write down these verses. They'll be very good to med be meditating on. We could say also concerning this group that they had the greatest amount of vision, eternal vision, and it kept them pressing toward a defined mark. You know, without real eternal vision, people live carelessly, we are told. They are the wisest people in history. They chose to invest in eternal things, not on earthly things. And according to Matthew 5.19, they did not change God's word to accommodate the flesh. He who breaks even the least of these commandments and teaches men's soul, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. To teach other people to lower and compromise God's standards, it means that they are not going to be totally conformed to the image of Christ. We're talking about least commandments, not great commandments. They're honest, they're firm, but they're also very kind. These have the most grace in their lives. And where is grace given in times of need? So these were people who went through a lot of trials in their lives, who didn't harden their hearts. And they have the, the finest fruit of the Spirit developed in them. They are just like Jesus Christ. They have the most joy, the most peace, the most long-suffering, self-control. This is fruit that comes from a fully committed life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's say that they are a people who have the most light. Jesus is the light of the world. He is truth. And those who are close to him have allowed the light to deal with every dark area in their inner life. Search totally with his light. And <clears throat> these are people who want the praise of God more than the praise of men. They are the most dead to self, not self-willed. Just like the captain of their salvation who when he came into this world declared, I have not come to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And he said that all his life. And these who are right around him have had the same spirit and the same thinking. Well, let's review these things again, because we want to get these things down deep in our heart. These are qualities of those who are the closest to the Lamb on Mount Zion in eternity. These who are right beside him are the most meek because they have become lambs and they are positioned next to the Lamb. The meek shall inherit the earth and many other things. These have the most light because they're dwelling with him who is the light of the world. 
thoroughly searched with his light, his truth. They are the most wise, investing in things that are eternal, building in the invisible, making wise choices. <clears throat> and remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need a godly fear of coming short of anything God has purposed for our lives. These, these are people who had the most vision that kept them pressing toward a defined mark, seeking a better resurrection, a better eternity. They had the most holy fear. <clears throat> We're told, again, in Psalm 19, verse 9, that the fear of the Lord is clean or cleansing. The fear of the Lord keeps us clean, and it is cleansing, present tense. And these who are right beside the Lamb on Mount Zion are the most humble. Therefore God hath highly exalted them and given them a name above every other name. They have a special name in their foreheads. Just like Jesus. They're the most dependent. Remember, <clears throat> the Lord is nigh unto those who are of a broken and contrite spirit. A repentant spirit, a dependent spirit. Lord, I, I rely on you. I need you every second. A people who have the most grace, which is given in times of need. So they went through trials and didn't harden their heart. They were morally pure in motives, in speech. They are the most holy all the inner paths of their life belonging completely to the Lord. There's no idols or other loves in their life controlling them. These who rank highest in heaven, right beside the Lamb, were the most faithful to duty, following the Lamb wherever he went, in the good times and the difficult times, always following him. These people are the most conformed to his image. <clears throat> totally compatible with Christ. A fully surrendered mind and heart. These around the throne have the most fruit of the Spirit developed in them. All the virtues, divine virtues of God and willing to go through the necessary processes to have these beautiful fruits developed in their lives. They are the most unselfish with the love of God perfected in them. All of 1 Corinthians 13, where it talks about the qualities of divine love worked out in them, bearing all things, enduring all things, not envying. They are the most dead to self, Constantly, like Jesus, not my will, Lord. Give me grace, Lord, not to go my own way, but your will be done. Jesus said, I delight to do thy will. And that's what we want in our lives. We want to be very close to the Lamb on Mount Zion in heaven. And very faithful to other people, not breaking commandments and teaching men so to try to have their pleasing people. We want to tell people what they need to hear in love, not compromising. I tell you that many people are going to lose rewards because they have broken many of these least commandments and taught men so, and they have kept people short of coming to the glory of God and having their full reward and being totally conformed to the image of Christ. And these are the most near to Christ, seeing his face, forever gazing upon his beauty and being transformed for all eternity. Boy, I'd sure like to be in that number. And these have the best resurrection. This is the mark, the goal, the prize that the Apostle Paul talked about, to win Christ, to have a better resurrection. 
and to be as close to him as possible for all eternity. Remember Philippians 3, verse 10 to 14. And remember what Jesus said, to know him is life eternal. So, this is a capsule of the message of Zion, to be where he is and to become just like him. Well, may the Lord bless his eternal word to our hearts and God help all of us to become more and more like this group that is mentioned here in Revelation 14, verse 1 to 5. Now, I realize this is 144,000 who are the choicest of the, of the harvest. There's another 144,000 who are Jews. That's a different group. But there are actually two groups of 144,000 in God's word. So let's seek to be as close to him as possible and to be a delight to him. God bless you.